in today's episode, hearing deprivation, fun mode, and yes, a whole lot of forging. Let's go! Story time! I've been an avid VFC user and supporter for quite a while now, even before joining Red Wolf. Now, while the company has been through some ups and downs when it came to the product development, they kept trying to improve their products in conjunction with the demands from the community. Today, we're going to see the culmination of these improvements wrapped up in two beautiful GBBRs, the Mark 18 and the FSP. I've had the pleasure of reviewing several VFC guns while here on Red Wolf TV, and I'm the owner of more of their guns than sometimes I'm willing to admit. But what makes these two so special? I guess we're just gonna have to dive in to find out. Hey guys, when we talk about VFC, usually two things come to mind their amazing build quality, and their incredible attention to detail. Now, these are two qualities I'm pretty sure we can all universally agree on. However, oftentimes, VFC has become something of a polarizing brand, generating emotion on both sides of the spectrum. Either they really loved, or they're really hated. There certainly is something to be said about these two guns. And the first thing that I do wanna say is I wanna highlight how good they actually look. These two guns are really in the spitting image of their real steel counterparts. They feature fully licensed Daniel Defense rails as well as fully licensed Colt lower receivers. Now, I know what you may be thinking. The rails are a little dark, and they're not as bronzy as the real DD rails you see on traditional Mark 18s. However, when it comes to fit and finish and make, these things are great. And the weight-wise especially, dare I say, they feel almost exactly like the Mark 18 I shot earlier this year in SHOT Show. Another big draw of these guns is that they're already set up right out of the box to look as close to as possible the issued guns you see Marsoc Raiders or Rangers use. So if you're building an impression kit and that really matters to you, these are probably going to be your number one choice. Other than the aforementioned Dan defense rails on both guns, both guns also feature the birdcage style flash hider you see up front. Both of them are carbine length guns, so both inner barrels come in at a 14.5 inch length. From there, the Mark 18, which you see here, has flipped up front and rear sights that are in the Knight's Armament style, and the FSP, which is this one here, has a flip up rear sight with a triangle front sight. Now, this front part of the rail, how it wraps around the barrel, looks so cool and really adds a sense of aggression to this particular model, which is personally my favorite. Now, the middle portion of these guns is really the star of the show. The upper and lower receiver are forged. Yes, forged aluminum upper and lower receivers. Now, why is that so cool? Allow me to explain. In the real steel world, forging is one of the processes they use to make their receivers. In simple, and I mean super simple terms, they superheat the metal and press the shape out like you would expect a blacksmith or sword maker do when they are using said metals. So instead of just having your upper and lower receiver thrown together with other methods such as die casting, these are made in the same exact way as the real guns. Just they're aluminum and not steel, but I think you guys get my point. On the lower receiver, you're gonna find all the controls being in the same positions as they always are with the fire selector, the trigger, and the bolt release. Yes, you guessed it, all pretty standard in the same place. It even comes with an A2 style grip, which is as about as ergonomic as a two x four wrapped in newspaper. I have Colin Noir to thank for that analogy. It pretty much sums up how I feel as well. And finally, to wrap up the whole issued look, the gun comes with an adjustable SOT Mod style stock. Let's take it apart and show you guys the internals. As GBBRs, it's important that we show you guys how to take down these guns. And we're gonna start by first removing the magazine. Once the magazine is removed, you push out this rear pin.
and this front pin to separate the upper and lower receiver. Upon removing the upper and lower receiver, you will see the trigger group right here on the lower receiver that allows you to clean, lube, and maintenance this portion of the gun. The same applies to the upper receiver where you now have access to the bolt carrier group. Both guns come with CNC high-speed bolt carriers that are full travel. Yes, you heard it, full travel. So I'm really looking forward to some great recoil impulses. Both bolts have the ability to adjust its power output, but Gambit has more on that. So click on the card up top to find out more. There is one complaint to this gun that I need to highlight to you guys. With newer VFC guns, we're starting to see them place the hop-up adjuster in more logical locations. You can refer back to the SR25 if you want to see. Now, this one, as well as the Mark 18, didn't follow such same philosophies. You will need to remove this whole bottom portion of the rail to access your hop-up adjuster, which is right here. Now, because these are such nice guns and I don't want to risk scratching them, I'm not going to do this on camera. However, I did attach a photo that you can see where that adjuster is on the outer barrel. And you can see that photo right here. See, it's just not the easiest thing to do. I don't know why they kind of took one step forward and one step back. The gun does feel like it's got some weight to it. But then again, so did the real one. It points well, and this rail feels girthy and strong. It doesn't want to bend or wobble just makes you want to go and abuse it. Now, enough of me talking. Let's see how the gun recoils. Not only is the felt recoil extremely strong with the bolt traveling all the way back, it's also really loud. Now, Time for the gas efficiency test, and let's go chrono the thing. I'm doing 0.2 gram BBs and Airsoft Surgeon Green Gas. On for our gas efficiency test, which inadvertently so happens to be my favorite part of any GDBR review. These are the new VFC V mags, and we're gonna see how gas efficient these mags are with these new guns. I have charged this mag full of gas, and we're gonna see how many full magazines we can shoot. Each magazine holds 30 rounds. One. That's close to two full mags with two BBs left on this one. Putting the fact that I also shot a couple bursts in there, I'd say it was pretty good. Here we are at the warehouse, and once again, I'm standing 20 or so meters away from our target down range. I have with me the FSP, left the marketing upstairs, the same length, so it should perform more or less the same. As an added bonus, I get to play with a real Uintech. That trigger break, crispy. Crispy like Krispy Kreme. Let's go take a look at those results. From about 20 or so meters away, the gun performed exceptionally well with a pretty tight grouping. Now, time for fun mode. Fun mode, engaged. Now, I think that did the trick. Let's go back to the studio. Hey guys, another really cool gun that I got to look at a while ago was the SR25. Why don't you check out the review? It's up right here. You can either click on the card or the link is in the description below. 
Getting back to these two guns now, what are my final thoughts here? VFC has gotten something of a bad rep with certain people because of their older or previous version GBBRs. Now, I'm not here to argue with you about your experience, however, I do want to present the facts. These two guns are a departure of some of the sour tastes you might have in your mouth. They have constantly upgraded and shifted to a more premium or high-end version. They have upgraded their internals to ensure optimum quality and increased tolerance. There are a lot of steel internals in these guns now, such as the bolt catch, hammer and safety, selector lever, and a bunch of other bits and bobs inside to really reinforce your gun. Coupling that with how gas efficient they are now, you're really getting an outstanding package. Now, for the price, and promise you won't yell at me, these are not cheap guns by any stretch of the imagination. You're looking uh, upwards of $700 for each one. But hey, come on, at least you're getting a premium product though. Back up top. What do you guys think? You guys GBBR fans? Let me know your favorite brand, your favorite rifle, even your favorite pistol. I'm dying to find out, guys. Let me know. And isn't it great when a manufacturer listens to us as a community when it comes to improving their product? I think BFC did that with these two guns. But I'm gonna let you be the judge of that one. So for cool products like this and many more, don't forget to check out our online store at www.rebelfarisoft.com. My name is Mark, aka Blue Steel, and I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Rebel TV. Have a good one, guys.